Yo, attention Glenn or whoever else may be concerned. I'm a former member of your congregation and other Church of Christ congregations for years. Outside of you, who was paid for a job, I was the most knowledgeable in the Christian faith, the most dedicated in attendance, and gave more to your poor pantry than anyone else. Two distinct points of utmost importance here, so listen carefully. One, I was born with a disability on the autism spectrum. It leaves one unable to connect socially and other learning problems. Yet such people have high IQs. This caused slash causes perpetual lifetime shunning, mistreatment, and disenfranchisement by society. That's understandable coming from our fallen world, which rejects Christ. Yet it not only comes from non-believers or those who simply, uh, quote-unquote, believe in Jesus. It also comes from your so-called one true church that Christ established, as opposed to misguided denominationalists. For example, since my mother had given Christmas presents in unused garbage bags, I assumed that was kosher. Yet when I donated items in said bags to your pantry, I got a couple of reactions from people which seemed like shunning. My suspicions were affirmed by Tony's announcement in his group, where he said that people were up in arms over donations being in clean garbage bags. Millions starved to death around the world are infested with parasites, live in mud pits, and or are terrorized and enslaved. A million people are exposed to human waste, which they must clean up in order to get money to live. India's untouchable class. Some homeless would even be thankful for a dirty garbage bag to capture the warmth from a heating grate over which they sleep. But instead of trying to help those people, Church of Christers focus their wrath on me, who was helping people while, while uh, simply lacking uppity, adequate, and exquisite snobbery. I told you this, and your response was, that was a long time ago. Doesn't matter if it was a thousand years ago if the attitude hasn't changed. You won't be able to explain anything away at the judgment with, that was a long time ago. God expects people to change their attitude before the judgment. In, in the third congregation of Larry, he affirmed that people are judging you. And Larry admitted, we couldn't hold a candle to the church of the first century. Pertaining to a fourth group, I had mailed an older woman a friendly flyer advertising my website with my email address. She responded by making a police report. The policeman emailed me, called me a creep, and threatened to arrest me. Though outside your particular circle, that was still a Church of Christ! I'm a true Christian who believes in the Prince of Peace. If I wasn't, I would have dealt with you people in a much different way, which would not involve verbal communication. You people may not have the faintest idea how hurtful and damaging you can be. Then you have single women choosing to marry non-Christian men more often than not in your high number of divorced people like the denominations. And most churches of Christ are worse than the so-called man-made denominations and that you have large face clocks on the back wall which young people constantly turn around to look at in annoyed anticipation of getting it over with and going home. Two, your uh, non-denominational one true Lord's church pattern claim. Over the last 18 years, I have been studying church history. I have also studied logic. I discovered that what church men from every early century believed and practiced is extremely well documented. And guess what? Not only are most things consistent throughout every century, but your Church of Christ deviates in belief and or practice on over a dozen different points. And I'm not referring to points of mere cultural difference or expediency. I'm referring to points where your church deviates that are explicitly stated or implied within scripture that you would see if your interpretation matched the consistent interpretation of Christians throughout church history and worldwide. Anglican, Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, non-church of Christ who also claim non-denominationalism, Orthodox, Pentecostal, etc. leaders have over a thousand commentaries supporting their doctrines too. And it sounds exactly as if they're completely right. That is, when you only read their commentaries and hear their preaching while excluding others. Yes, you have logically concluded that the church was founded in Jerusalem on the Pentecost following Christ's resurrection. 
Initial repentance and ongoing repentance are necessary for salvation, besides ongoing faith. Divorce and remarriage for any reason besides adultery is unacceptable. Homosexual behavior is unacceptable. Water baptism is necessary for salvation. A saved person can definitely lose their salvation. The other four points of Calvinism are heresy too. Salvation is in Christ's church, not out of it. The kingdom and the church are one and the same. Holy Spirit baptism was only the miraculous not for common believers. Everyone's physical body will indeed be resurrection. Uh, musical instruments have no business in the assembly, and convoluted premillennial theories are rubbish. The early church believed as you do on these points. But by that same logic, they concluded much differently on other points. In fact, you lack the basic understanding that the Bible is an Eastern book and thus has a circular narrative repeating concurrently throughout. Westerners mistakenly treat it as a Western book with a chronological narrative. This alone seriously affects one's interpretations. Just on the off chance that someone might be interested, here is a mere introduction to the topic. A Dictionary of Early Christian Beliefs, David W. Burkhardt, Editor. For advanced studies, there is a tsunami of information by early churchmen who compare scripture with scripture, who, unlike almost every church leader today, were completely fluent in the original Greek, lived in a time before the church had a chance to apostatize, and fully understood that truth is always consistent with all other truth. So your church is not the exclusive Lord's church. It is a denomination, and like other modern denominations, fails morally. Why address this now? Because I'm in the midst of a series on hypocrites where I expose their dirty asses for the world to see, which hopefully will benefit the open-minded. I don't expect to change your closed mind. If you did, you would also benefit by having a better outcome at the judgment. Perhaps the avoidance of screaming in pain. I simply expect to reach others who've been in similar situations to encourage them. However, on the off chance that you would contact me, do not contact me for any other reason than, than saying how you plan on making changes.